Nemo. It's got a nail in the tyre through the tread. Andrew's just setting up some of these. We, um, so you can see that one there. So that's got like a gap there. And the rest haven't. Um, so there's something quite come amiss. So you have to undo a bolt and move a wash around and tweak it because it because it, it's not touching the disc. It lets soil in and it blocks, which is really annoying. So he's just going to set reset that one. I think one on the other side as well. Did one last week. Don't know what's causing it. Trailer's got seed on there, ready for going out. But it's my mum and dad's golden wedding anniversary on Saturday. And my mum, for the last two months, has not shut up about putting the marquee up today, ready for it. So the lads are just going to go and quickly do that now. Um, I've got an NFU meeting starting at nine o'clock. So I can't supervise, but I'm sure they'll manage because we've done it before. Finally, me meeting is finished. That's nine o'clock till just after two o'clock. Stuck in the house on a busy day. It's quite frustrating, but at least um, the lads have got the marquee up. We'll just run the rest of this seed up to Andrew now. We're starting the last fill of barley now. I think we'll have a little bit of seed left as well. So we might do it at one big sporting time. So, well, then, I'm going to set them bolters so I've got some tools. Just moving them washers, put them down there. Change the spacing of the cultures against the disc. Hopefully it should kick it to the right shape. We're a washer short of spacing it properly. Yeah, the perfect ones on there, so I'm just going to nick one off that flower here. Turns out uh, the washers on the Merlin wood guards and none plate don't fit, so I'm going to have to shoot back the yard on the fast track, get some washers. Got a tub of washers, but I'm going to take a pry bar with me because there's a spring. It's really hard to get in. Oh, it's one here, but it's not. And Get a pry bar with us, just make it a little bit easier. Yeah, these have been running out of line slightly. You have to put an extra washer in there to pack them close. So that's carbide, that's it doesn't work, but not an easy job. But if it gets a bit of a gap, that's a stone or a bit of soil in, and then it forces it out wider and it jams the disc from turning. So you have to get off and mess about with it. But anyway, it's sorted now, but it wasn't easy because that spring's quite tight for getting it in. It's like a five-handed job. And he's off again. Yeah, we messed around for quite a bit. Not having the right washes didn't help to shoot, like I say, shoot back the yard. But uh, I think we're just gonna have to shim a few of them now. I don't quite know what's causing it. it must be just a little bit of wear now in it. GPS ever so slightly out there for some reason. Andrew's gone twice around this field now, 24 metres, another time around. I bet, I bet you that is third of the field done. Just got the last bag to fit in now, so I can take the Merlot back. And I think the seed's arriving as well that we need, the wheat seed. Load this on now, and then we're going to put the fast track back on the front of it. So it turns out we had the wrong code in the GPS, so it hadn't been using full RTK. Anyway, let's see what it's doing now. I'm just, just looped round at the end. It's set back in, and it's supposed to be accurate to within it's a couple of centimeters. I suppose it probably is. That's. Uh, that width there and that width there are pretty similar. Maybe 20 centimetres out perhaps. Maybe it's supposed to be 10 centimetres out, but maybe it's back on the line there. A little bit of a slope to the field perhaps. This one's actually running off the base station on Bill and Joe's shed. It's owned by the New Holland dealership, but it's the strongest one in our area. Apart from that, that RTK network that we're running the mower off, I think that'd work in our area as well. So maybe when that expires in December, See which is the cheapest to go with, but you have to sort of pay for a subscription unless you're Joe and you've worked out how to make your own base station. Joe Seals, that is. The rest of the wheat seeds arrived. We got this from uh, Highfield Seeds, who we grow the seed beans for. It's going to rain tomorrow. I think we're going to get nine and a half mil of rain, so we could stay out drilling late tonight to get it in. But if that nine and a half mil turns into 20 mil, it won't do it much good, so uh, we won't bother. We'll just um, call it a day after finishing that barley. 
Yeah. Well, at least the seeds here for next time we go out. Put a twist in the necks so that the bags will spin. Oh, they're not going to. And then that way, we've got the name and the variety. In the right place in the pile. Got nice and still now. So we're going to do another field now that Andrew drilled yesterday morning. That was an OSR stubble. It's filled it with wheat. We're going to go and spray it off now and put a pre emergent spray on all at the same time. Same tap as the other day. Let the slugs eat the oil seed rate as long as possible so that they don't eat the wheat. The field had ran out on the other day as well. I put a little bit extra in. I'm going to call and do that on the way there as well. The time it took me to come back with the Merlot, unload it and then fill the sprayer up. Andrew's just finished that 34 acre field. I know we've done the headlands first and we're messing with the GPS. I think he's just drilled about 15 acres in um, about 35 minutes. Yeah, I'm just doing this little strip through the middle here because it only got a light dose. So I'm just putting a half rate on it to make sure that it definitely kills the weeds in it. In hindsight, I kind of wish I'd roll this field. Um, and we can't really roll it now because it's had its pre-emergent spray on. But rolling it helps keep the slot tighter so the slugs can't move in it. Also, it physically squashes the slugs as well. But yeah, I just hope that the uh, carry-on grazing, the OSR, don't even eat seeds we put in. But it's nice and warm. We're going to get some rain tomorrow. But if it's cold and, well, if it's, if it's wet, the slugs love it. If it comes really cold, then they, they bore it down and disappear. But got to keep our fingers crossed that there's enough for them to eat before the wheat gets established. I'm cutting through Joe's yard to get to the field where we spray it and see that up there that is the RTK base station that we're tuned into and what we're just saying then I wonder what had happened if you went up on the roof and you just like moved it six inch with all the tractors in the northwest that are logged on that all suddenly moved six inch or would it would it not really make much difference because they're getting it off the satellites don't know who knows the answer let me know in the comments, but it would be funny if it just went up there just went like that and made every track to wobble in the northwest. Just cutting across a field now to get to where I'm going. And I was reading some of the comments from yesterday's video where I said, what do people have for the tea? And there's a guy said that he's, he's on day 233 of eating something different every single day for his, for his tea or dinner, if you're posh, or live anywhere sort of south of um, Cheshire. Um, that's some feet that 233 different things and then especially if you really like one particular thing how would you not have it i suppose you could have it for I suppose you could have it for a different meal but yeah 233 days different dishes a little challenge for everyone there first time i've sprayed the dark for a bit so i've just been setting the blue lights up because they've not been used they got knocked so that i can see the spray pattern properly it doesn't look that dark on my phone it is to be honest, the yellow spray doesn't show up that well on the blue light, which I didn't realise because I've never sprayed this kind of spray in the dark. So I put the lights on. And there we go, we can see what we're doing anyway. It's like daylight to be honest. On a normal spray pattern it really shows up in the dark. But LED lights are alright. In fact that reminds me, these came on the Bateman, they're just whatever Bateman supplied. UTV lights, I've noticed they're at the Cheshire Ploughing Championships in Ireland, sorry, it's not the Cheshire, the Irish Ploughing Championships this week, so they're there. I've seen these pictures on Instagram the stand, so who else is there? Is many people over in Ireland watching, or have many people gone from the UK to Ireland to go and see it? And don't forget as well, not this Wednesday, but sorry, next Wednesday is Cheshire Ploughing match as well in Cheshire, which we're going up to with a couple of tractors. Can we see the birthday bumper in the dark? So we've got Stuart Harvey, Simon Deville, Finley Taylor, Ryan Thomas, Sandra McCann, Amber Wilkinson, and Oscar Horton. But there's two Oscar Horton, someone whose birthday's today and someone whose birthday's tomorrow. Or someone's put it on twice. It's a little bit confusing. But well, happy birthday, everyone on there. And anyone who's not on there, happy birthday to you too. That's about it for today. I've finished now, folded up, turn me blue lights off before I go down the road. Otherwise, everyone will suddenly start doing the speed limit because they'll be like, oh, it's a police car coming. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.